This patient is presenting in good general health and is suffering from moderate to advanced periodontitis. Prior to surgery, the patient received a session of prophylaxis, including instructions in proper oral hygiene, scaling and professional tooth cleaning. For teeth with recession type defects, a coronally directed roll technique is recommended to minimize trauma to the gingival margin from tooth brushing. Surgical treatment of the recession defects should not be performed until the patient can demonstrate an adequate standard of supragingival plaque control. Tooth number 23 has been covered previously with a mucograft matrix. No preoperative medication was needed. Having been treated very successfully with mucograft, the patient also wants her first lower right premolar covered. This recession of tooth number 44 is presenting a Miller class 2 type defect. We have pocket depth of 1 mm in the buccal area and 2 mm interdentally. The defect itself is 4 mm wide and 5 mm deep. Aesthetics is the primary indication for root coverage in this patient. Following administration of local anesthesia and prior to starting the surgery, root surfaces are instrumented with grits and chisels or rotating instruments. The mechanical treatment is terminated when the softened tooth structure is completely removed and the root surface feels hard. After instrumentation, the root surface has to be washed for 60 seconds with saline. The flap elevation procedure starts with an intracircular incision using microsurgical instruments. The intracircular incision is followed by a horizontal incision interproximally at the level of the cemento-enamel junction. Two 
vertical divergent bevel incisions are performed at the mesial and distal line angles of the adjacent teeth. The blade is kept almost parallel to the bony plane leaving a very small band of periosteum to protect the underlying bone and leaving soft tissues mesial and distal in the recipient bed for better healing of the overlaying flap when coronally positioned. The facial portion of the interdental papilla is deepithelialized to create a connective tissue bed to which the surgical papilla of the coronally advanced flap will be sutured. The two surgical papillae are carefully dissected split thickness. The soft tissue apical to the root exposure is elevated as a full thickness flap by using a small periostal elevator to expose 5 mm of the bone apical to the recession defect. This is done to include the periosteum and the maximum soft tissue thickness in the central portion of the flap. Apical to the bone exposure split thickness flap elevation is continued until it is possible to move the flap passively in the coronal direction. To permit the coronal advancement of the flap, all muscle insertions have to be eliminated. The blunt dissection is extended buccally and laterally to such an extent that the flap stays tension-free when positioned coronally to the level of the cemento enamel junction. The exposed root surface is conditioned with 24% EDTA for 2 minutes to remove the smear layer from the dentine tubuli and to improve coagulum adhesion to the root surface. After EDTA application, the root surface is rinsed with saline for 60 seconds. The defect size now is 4 mm wide and 7 mm high and needs to be measured again to determine the size of the MUCO graft matrix needed. The matrix is cut to size 9 mm long and 6 mm wide in order to slightly overlap the defect. graft is placed on the prepared recipient bed with the smooth surface facing the oral cavity and the porous surface facing the bone. The sharp edges are removed and the matrix is fixed to the root surface with a resorbable 6-0 sling sutures.
Complete penetration of the matrix by blood and exudates allows perfect adhesion of the device. Formation of a hematoma beneath the mucograft must be avoided. Subsequently, the root surface will be covered with a coronally advanced flap. A tension-free flap is extremely difficult to achieve, especially in the lower jaw. Some additional mobilization is done so that the tissue flap can be secured slightly coronally of the CEJ. Again, the sling sutures placed at the papilla using non-irritating sutures. The sling sutures permit stabilization of the surgical papilla over the interdental connective tissue beds and allow for a precise adaptation of the flap margin over the convexity of the underlying anatomic crowns. Vertical incisions are closed by interrupted periostal 6O sutures starting at the most apical extension of the vertical release incisions. Suturing proceeds coronally with interrupted sutures, each of them directed from the flap to the adjacent buccal soft tissue in the apical coronal direction. This is done to facilitate the coronal displacement of the flap and to reduce tension. The flap margin is now positioned coronally to the CJ to compensate for post-surgical soft tissue shrinkage. No periodontal dressing is applied. Following surgery, patients have to rinse twice daily with chlorhexidine for one month. During that time, tooth brushing is not allowed in the surgical area. Anti-inflammatory medication and additional analgetics are prescribed according to the individual needs. The lateral sutures can usually be removed after 7 days and the external sling suture after 14 days. At one month after the surgery, an examination of the gingival condition should take place and the patient will be instructed to clean the area carefully with a very soft toothbrush. No probing or scaling is allowed for six months. 